seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother. Episode 24 of Amateur Hour. I'm Cody Courts, the president of Southeast Texas Flag Football League, and here with me, as usual, is Troy, Troy Maddox, the vice president of Southeast Texas Flag Football League. Hey, hey. The wild card vice president. Ah, the wild card vice president. Knows no rules, knows no bounds. <laughs> You're sort of like uh, a wrestling manager. Yes. Of, um, you know, like your Paul Bearer. Or yeah, uh, no, Jimmy the Mouth I, of the I South feel Heart. Like, yeah, I feel like I'm more of uh, Jimmy with the bullhorn. Yeah, the you, mouth need, of the South. you need more colorful clothing. Uh, it, do I not already? <laughs> that, you do have a lot of um, accoutrement. Accoutrement, that's my, yeah, that's my thing. Yeah. Uh, okay, so <laughs> we'll go ahead and talk about the first two weeks of the season. Unless you want to go over something else first. Or do you want to go over... The uh, first two weeks first. Uh, well, we already went over week one. We I meant the, 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 the last sec- two weeks. Oh, whatever. We'll the last two weeks. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, uh, uh, no, I think everything's good. I think uh, everything that's ever needed to be said has been said. Troy needs to act more like a vice president, not as much of a player out there on the field. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Apo- apologies all around for anyone that has to listen to me ever. Ever. Well, you know. It's All right. okay. So now I'm done with apologies. Now I'm going to go back to being me. <laughs> All right. So week two was a week of blowouts. Exp- the only good game was the Expendables playing Team Easy Money, and Easy Money squeaked on by 18 to 14. That was a, actually a really good game. Yeah, I mean, Expendables are, are – they're just one of those solid teams now. You expect them to uh, compete every time now, and Team Easy Money is just getting better with uh, – the group of guys putting them all together. So it's – those are two good teams. I mean, I think they're going to – I think those can be playoff teams. Oh, yeah. Easy Money didn't have um, their uh, quarterback – I think his name is Jeremy Johnson for that game. Uh, but he came back in week three, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But the rest of the games in week two were pretty lopsided. They had a championship rematch in which the showstoppers um, pretty much had – what I would consider a reality check for the Trill Black Panthers, and they beat them forty-one to six. Uh, Jake was there. Yeah, the showstoppers look good. They just scored every time, and and just frustrated the Black Panthers. It was that was a that was a yeah that was a big a big showing for the showstoppers. Yeah, it's hard to play defense against them. You know those piercing cat eyes of Jake Diltz and the bulgy lumpiness of Walt Durham. He, he's he's got all those things going for him. <laughs> um, okay, so Squad Elite beat Punishers fifty-two to fourteen. The four hundred nine boys beat the Pirates fifty-seven to zero, which made us implement the fifty points lead in second half game over rule. That's just made up. Well, yeah, we decided that at that point immediately. The Jack boys like just played around with Team New Balance for a while and beat them fifty-two to twenty-six. Um, and the Touchdown Factory failed to produce their quota and lost forty-one to six against the Wolf Pack. Yes, they did not make a factory of touchdowns. They made one. No, although I don't think you would make a factory of touchdowns. I think you, you can fill a factory with touch to highlight real touchdowns. Well, maybe they had them at the factory, but they didn't. They didn't get off the line. That's it. They were defective. They were <laughs> defective touchdowns. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, a group of touchdowns. I don't think there's a word for it. Well, you know, we'll come up with one. <laughs> I mean, so a factory of touchdowns could be a thing. A factory of touchdowns. Yeah. Um, the Jack Boys beat the squad 32 to zero. Squad couldn't put any sort of defense up, and the Jack Boys were giggling loudly the entire time. <laughs> and then the herd beat Texas Toast 42 to eight. I forgot about that one. Yeah, yeah that happened too. So big blowouts. That's very. That is kind of unusual to have blowouts every game like that. And then two teams that got shut out, which is very unusual. But week three was a total change and makes it so much more fun, I think. This is the way it should be every week. I wish it would be. Yeah. Now, week three, last week was pretty good. Yeah, this is this is what I'm talking about. This is how the game should be every week. 
So the Showstoppers played the Expendables in, game, in the first game at 10. And that was a pretty good game for a while. Showstoppers ended up winning 26-14, uh, to 14, which holding the Showstoppers to uh, four touchdowns is pretty good. Um, yeah, they had the lead. I thought they had a chance to win that game. They've had a few mistakes. And, well, I mean, just letting the Showstoppers get down and score, you, you have to stop them more than once to, win the, to beat them. And the difference to me in that was Cunn. Um, you know, Chris Cunningham on defense, you he can't throw it deep. Yeah, he made a pick down when they were – Expendables were going down to score. He made an interception in the end zone, which ended the game, basically. He made a big play on offense. Now, they picked off uh, Diltz, I think, once or uh, – at least once. They may have picked him off twice. Um, now, since I talked about Walt earlier, Walt had a really big touchdown in that game. So, shout out to Walt Durham with your center flag route corner type touchdown thing i do remember that yeah look yeah. at that he did a good job <laughs> pat him on his little head <laughs> uh the next game was the herd playing the punishers the herd won 36 to 22 um there were a few penalties in that game <laughs> yeah flag guarding and rush, flag guarding. people running runners lower in their head you know shoulders and stuff yeah, but it was a fun game. Yeah, I mean, it was you know. competitive. They, I mean, well, they came back at the end. Um, yeah. they it was thirty to twenty two there in the last few minutes of it, and then we the herd scored one more touchdown, which pretty much put it away. I, I, I did find it odd that the one dude quit and walked off the field because he got called for a flag guarding. That was that was odd. Yeah, guys, even if you get called for a bad penalty, you you can still keep playing. It it doesn't cancel out anything else. <laughs> he took his um, shirt off and threw it in the stands yeah, into some girl and then he went and sat in the car. I mean, the last Why? guy that did that fought a bunch of people at um in where was it? In Indiana and then came back as Metal World Peace. <laughs> so it was, you it don't was have odd. to run our tested. You can just keep playing. He, it's okay. He left his team with seven guys out there, and they actually started. They actually scored, I think, three touchdowns whenever that happened. I mean, Troy that. and I have been involved in a flag football game that resulted in a giant brawl fight where people got cleated and stomped in the head, and even that game kept going. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't this league, but yeah. that game even finished too. <laughs> so even if there's a bad penalty, you can keep playing. We we really don't mind. Yeah, I want to. I'll I want to address referees and penalties later. Okay. Uh, the next game was the four hundred nine boys playing the squad. Squad played a lot better this week. Um, whenever David Dixon wanted to, he started running on them. Um, he kind of took over for a little bit. Um, on offense, but the four and nine boys just had too much experience, too much Byron uh, Johnson and uh, the like. You know, those uh, their pickups, um, Bruce Reyes and uh, Cami Sosa made a big difference. They um, um, they really did really well. JC's got doing well with that team. He's um, I think he's got people where they need to be now. So they look pretty good. Yeah, they're always a solid team, and just to you know, when when you're when you, if you're struggling, if you're in a close game, it's good to have a quarterback like JC and have you know a check down guy like Byron who know you know he's going to get some yards. Uh, Great head of hair. Yeah, that's always going to be uh, a good thing. It's always it's always good to have somebody there you trust and and you can help make people miss, and it's always good in close games. So that, yeah, that helped them this week. Well, they, they played well. Um, now, the next game is the game of the week, and I'll do a highlight video for this game. It's um, Team Easy Money played Texas Toast. That game was tied at the end of regulation, went down to overtime, and Easy Money came out with a barely victory. So that was a 2-0 and Team Easy Money playing an 0-2 Texas Toast, who are brand new. You know, Easy Money's a new team, kind of, but they're a yeah, bunch of guys who have played, played before, forever, yeah, and they're familiar with it. Man, I know that you weren't there for that entire game, but they uh, Texas Toast has apparently been watching videos or watching you know everybody else play because they were doing hitching pitches, they were moving down the field correctly. I mean, those guys can catch too. There was a guy that caught a ball in the end zone that was just awesome. Um, and easy money. Finally, at the end of the game, Texas Toast was up thirteen to six. Easy money throws a deep ball. Guy goes up and catches an unbelievable pass. Um, or should I say it was an unbelievable catch. 
and they uh, get to uh, 12 to 13. They get the extra point, go to overtime. On their fourth play, they got to 40 yards during overtime. Easy money did. And Texas Toast just came up a little bit short. I think they had 30 yards. So it was awesome game. I love overtime games because you never know how it's going to turn out. Uh, and when it's a new team like that that's competitive with a team that's not – I mean, easy money is not new. Like you said, they're a new team, but they've been – in this, you know, playing these leagues forever. And it's just fun seeing those games come together where you don't know who's going to win. And uh, overtimes are always fun. It's always fun. Now, Texas Toast plays the Jack Boys next week. So it might be huh. a little bit back to reality for them. Or if they continued watching videos or doing whatever they're doing and practicing, who knows? That's, you know? uh, that's interesting. That's going to be fun. I'm excited for that one. The Jack Boys have been upset before. They have. <laughs> So and this would be another one. This would be a big one. I'd, but, hey, this uh, is what happens when teams get out here and play and keep on it and get better. Yeah. It's going to happen. Uh, the next game saw Team New Balance beat the Pirates 14-12. to And I think that this game, let me make sure that I'm right first. The Pirates, um, they well, they scored 18 points their first week, but they scored zero on week two. Their first touchdown of this game looked like these guys won the Super Bowl. They were so happy. <laughs> and they played – I mean, it, they gave them confidence. You know, they were another team that they, – they stay out there and watch the games, you know. And they started pitching and doing these little things to take some pressure off their quarterback. And they very nearly came away with the win. It came down to, I think, the last play. They were driving. They were inside the 20. And they just didn't score on the last play. So, it was close. It's a really good game. Let's see, and that's one of those teams that they're right now they're probably my favorite team out there because their game was at two o'clock. They were there out there at ten o'clock watching all they the other sure games. Were. They're out there playing or watching or see how everything goes. They're enjoying it. So right now they may be zero and three, but they're my favorite team right now. Well, they were in a circle stretching. Um, I like them. I like them. <laughs> they're they're cool. I like them. They've they're got cool. cool uniforms. Yeah, they they're different. Co- I like that their color is different than anyone else's. Yeah. You know. Oh, and also, well, we're about to go over that game, but. Before that, apparently um, uh, the union went on strike. Touchdown factory forfeited. So uh, either the union went on strike, they got shut down by OSHA, or um, I don't know what happened. Well, they were still assembling more touchdowns at the factory. Well, they were delayed they because didn't they do. didn't. They weren't there this week. So this is government regulations. Probably too much government. Democrats. Ugh. Or Republicans. Ugh. <laughs> so the Panthers come away with a win there. And for the final That's their game, first win of the season. It sure is. Wow, the defending, defending champs, champs are one and two now. You know what, though? The way the last year went for them. I think it started out similar, didn't it? just yeah. right. It, wow. They'll end up winning the championship again. <laughs> um, against the Pirates. Against the uh, So then the Wolfpack played Squad Elite in the 4 p.m. game. Squad Elite showed up with some brand new uniforms that looked pretty awesome. I like it. And they did cover the chest and the belly and part of the arm. It was exactly what the, was so, going to happen. Yeah, so their their GM was correct when he told us that that was going to happen. But they were blue and silver and black, and they were really cool. But the Wolfpack dominated that entire game. They got out to like a 33-6 uh, lead at some point. Squad League scored a couple of touchdowns at the end, but it really didn't matter. Um, Wolfpack looked pretty good. Johnny Acevedo was playing quarterback and looked like he had it all together and was – they looked like they had everything planned out. Like, uh, it looked very well choreographed. I'll they were, say that. They were a team that, what, two seasons ago were, you know, big – you know, won their last, you know, five or six games to make the playoffs. And then last season they kind of had a, a lull. They, you know, well, they stepped back. Well, they went Owen a lot, but every yeah. game was close. Yeah, but, yeah, but this year – I think they're heading in the right direction, and oh yeah, they haven't lost yet. It's going to be fun to see. There's, I mean, it's, it's the way it's working out right now. It, it's interesting. This is a fun to see who's going to make the playoffs already. Already interesting. Already interesting. Um, but that is all of the games for the last two weeks for weeks two and three. So any final thoughts on those? I think in our next, maybe we'll, on the next segment we'll go over what you, uh, yeah, what you were referring to. Yeah, well, I think it, it shows how this the dichotomy of the flag football season week two was all blowouts week three was i mean the biggest difference was like what 13 points maybe 12 points so right. that's uh that's pretty fun to see how each week's different so i'm uh and excited to see new teams getting better and uh i want to see those teams get some wins 
well, guys, if you're worried that you're not going to make the playoffs or that we're already 0-3, there's a lot of football to be played. Um, and you just never know. The top eight teams are going to make it, so that means only you know seven are not. Of those, if you you know they get a forfeit, that's already going to bump someone to the bottom of the stack. So keep on playing, keep on trying, and even if you're out of the playoff race, the only way to get better at this sport is to go out there and play it and play it against teams that are better than you. And, and now these are these are just our opinions of how we think the games you know go. We you know we watch them, we see how they go. If you would love to say give your opinion on how the games went, please come be a guest on our show. You can say whatever you like about each game, about each situation. Come on, yeah, we love I'll, we I'll want argue guests. With you. We can take shots together. Um, hell, I mean whatever you want to do. I mean as long as it's legal. Yeah, in Texas. Don't you know? Unless you want to fly the show somewhere else, but you're gonna to have to pay for uh, plane tickets. Yeah. So yeah, come be a guest, and we can talk about whatever you want. We can even be controversial and argue about it. I don't care. Oh, I like to. I <laughs> like Joy to converse to aggressively. <laughs> I will converse with someone really aggressively. Yeah. About anything. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, <laughs> all right, we'll stick around for the second segment when we'll go over blaming refs, tackle football, and the like. sequel to episode 23 um it's really 24 yeah yeah <laughs> we are we're, we're really we're life. really into this thing aren't we <laughs> oh, yeah. well at least, at least the sponsors keep rolling in we're we're genital deep into this yeah um okay troy i understand you have some feelings about referees and blaming the referees and other stuff so the floor is yours. Well, I, I don't have feelings about – I'm not blaming the referees. I mean, I, I will yell at a referee every now and then. But I, I do take offense – since we run the league, I do take offense to players blaming the referee for, you know, things happening, or, or especially in our games when, we, when we're playing and someone says something happens as a, a flag guard or something happens where it's a penalty on the other team – and the first thing they say is, oh, you're just calling that because you're playing against – we're playing against your team or, what, or the herd or whatever. And that is – that's – because uh, you and I know we're not telling the refs what to do. We're saying, oh, there's a flag, or we're yelling it out loud. That doesn't mean they're going to call it unless they see it. Right. Everybody yells out that. or you know, Everybody yells out something about – Well, you a, should if you're smart. Yes. If you see a flag guard and you're playing, you should yell yes. flag guard. But blaming the referees for bad calls or for you not scoring or doing this and that or, you know, not making a first down is one of the uh, – it's just one of the things that drives me insane. That's what, that's what ends up making me speak up more and more during games is because the refs are not the problem in a game. They're the ones that are just calling the game. They're just, they're just there to referee the game. They're, they don't have – they don't care who wins what game. They don't right. – I don't – when I'm refing, I don't care. When Walt's refing, he doesn't care who wins. Carl or JC, they're just refereeing the game to get to the next game. <laughs> they just want a, a fair game. It's it, and it's frustrating when it's getting blamed on somebody who's just doing this job to make the league run smoothly. Right. And if you guys, um, if you've ever refed anything like basketball or little league football or just kind of anything. It is so difficult to call things one way because all you're doing is reacting. You know, you're not really contemplating much at all because you just react. You see a flag guard and you throw a flag. You see someone get their flag pulled and you blow a whistle. You know, you see it before the first down line and you mark it there. It's really just a reaction. There's It, it would be pretty tough, I think, to actually call a game so that a team you wanted to win would be winning. Also on that, during our game, um, I heard someone say that uh, that ref's on their team, and that's why he's calling it that way. Walt refed our game. Walt Durham refed our game. He's a board member. He's not on our team. He's never been on our team. 
He plays for the Showstoppers. It would actually make more sense for him to call more things on us since we are um, have the better record and probably the better chance of you know competing in the playoffs than the team we were playing last week. It would you know be in his best interest for us to lose. The reason that there were 10 penalties on one team and one or zero on the other is because one team in that game has played for 11 years together and probably 15 years on different teams, and the other teams played for two years. It's a big difference. You know, you, you get out of the muscle memory habit of um, stiff arming and lowering your shoulder and blocking and things like that. You don't hold because you know it's a penalty. You know, you train your body to do that. It's just how it is. Yeah. I mean, like when I run, my, I run with the ball in my hand, and I run both my arms above my head, basically, where I won't flag guard. It's just one right. of those things that you just get used to, and it just takes time. And uh, and with the refs, with Sean, he's he's on the other, he's not on any team. He's just a – Sean's not on a, any team. He's just a ref that's out there doing his job. And it was funny one time where <laughs> – We don't was, pay the refs yeah, either. The teams pay the, the refs. The teams pay the refs, yeah. And it was kind of funny where one time there was some talking back and forth between teams and – and Sean just like, guys, it was, we're playing. The, the one team kept complaining, like, we're just we're playing football. Stop whining about that. We're just just play, just be an adult and play football. You know, it was just kind of funny how he even made a comment when they were whining about stuff not getting called or whatever. It was just kind of funny that uh, you know when he because he doesn't Sean doesn't ever say anything to any players. He just he's just out there playing the game and or roughing the game. And it's just kind of funny how. He he just made a statement when I've heard, never heard him say anything because he's been refing forever. And when Jacoby's out there, he does the same thing. He's just going to ref the game, and he doesn't. They don't care who wins. They do not care who wins at all. Right. Um, and I don't care who wins. I mean, I care who wins my game, but I'm not refing my game. Yeah. You know. Oh, and, and I'm gonna. I'm if I there's a call that I think should have been called, I'll say something. But well, you everyone know, does. Yeah, I mean, if you see something, you you know people yell yeah, about because it. it's easier to see on the field sometimes because you're right next to it or you're cl- on a different angle and the ref's looking at this then he's looking at that and I right mean, come on I mean I think I'm pretty above board on everything and so much so that I think I put my own team at a disadvantage sometimes um, if you want a detail behind that we had a guy that had played for us for several years that couldn't make two of the games during the season um, for the playoffs, you know, he, so I didn't let him play in the playoffs, even though he was always on our team and all this other stuff. And he would have really helped us in the playoffs. He was our best defensive player. Yeah. But I'm not going to do that. You know, it's not worth – to me, the league is more important than my team. So, you know, I want the league to work right. Um, also, <laughs> they're in, in our game, there was a guy who got called for flag guarding <laughs> – and because he got called, by the way, flag guarding is a five-yard penalty, and you can't even lose a first down on it. Um, he got called for flag guarding and said to Sean, I don't know why you called me for flag guarding. All I did was slap the guy's hand away. <laughs> Guys? That's the definition. That is flag guarding. Um, you can't you know, run with your hands around your hips. They'll call it. You know, Someone tries to pull your flag and they grab your arm or your hand, they'll usually call flag guarding. It's not that big of a deal. It's just that, you know, you haven't conditioned your body to grab yeah. the ball with both hands because you've never no, – no football anywhere says to do that because, you know, it's tackle football. So don't take it personally. Yeah. You know, just try to learn. Like, I mean, the – you know, Texas Toast was a good example, I thought, this week of a team that was actively trying to learn how to play the game. The Pirates did the same thing. You know, they were doing more flag football type plays instead of tackle football plays. Um, you know, and just actively trying to learn. So if you can take anything away from this at all, don't take it personal. If some, if a referee calls you for something you think you didn't do, your course of action should be make a mental note of it. Tell the referee, hey, man, I'd like to know, you know what I did wrong other than the game or at halftime. Let him explain it to you. Maybe he was wrong. They're wrong sometimes. It's okay. But to freak out about it on the field does no one any good. So that's, that's how I feel about the referee situation. I mean, and, and that's it. I think it, if you just you, – the more you do it, you'll notice the teams that don't get penalized a lot are the teams that have been doing it a long time. Showstoppers, Jack Boys, uh, The Herd. I mean, how, how many penalties do we ever get called on us in a game? Like, 
I mean, usually one or none. Yeah, I mean, oh, it could well, be like for well, holding, like holding, holding. The, trying to grab the, the flag and, and you hold it because that just, that's just, it right. happens anytime. So, but, well, we have false starts because we can't go on two. Yeah, we don't know how to do that. <laughs> That's that. That's pretty. That's but we actually, That's actually more embarrassing to me than anything else. But we don't flag guard just because we don't. We hold the ball with both hands and hold it over our head. You know, yeah. we don't. That, that's just how we've been doing things for ten years. Um, now, and was, it's not because we run the league and pay off the refs or whatever and tell them not to call penalties against us. That's not why we don't get penalties called against us. No, that's certainly not why. I mean, you know, we want to take a time trip back in time. Um, if we played a team last year, and JC was refing, and he was – or no, Walt was refing. We were playing against the 409 boys. Yes. And Walt called me short – or uh, I pulled JC's flag where I thought was short of a first down at the very end of the game, which would have given us the ball back and the possibility to win the game, and Walt gave him the first down. Now, did I think Walt was wrong? Well, hell yeah, I thought Walt was wrong, but – he got the first down. They won the game, and that was it. Even the you video know? said what was wrong, but that's <laughs> that's that's in the past. Now, uh, yeah. very important thing. Speaking of Walt and things referee nature, I'd like to introduce everyone, or I can't introduce it because he's not here right now. But I'd like to make everyone aware that Walt Durham is the referee czar. Any referee complaints, comments, questions, suggestions can go through Walt Durham. So if you guys have a problem with the referees, if you have a, a question, a suggestion, anything you want, you can send Walt um, a message or an email. If you want to just send it to the uh, Facebook on the league, I'll get it to him. And uh, he will handle all referee issues from henceforth. So you can deal with Walt. I like it. Because I'm busy. Uh, and I'm not the person to deal with. Nobody wants to we, deal. We with know Jordan. everyone knows this. Nobody, nobody got time for that. Yeah. Um. So getting to another thing, a sentence that I love is, "If this was tackle football, dot dot dot." Well, that's what I'm saying. If this was tackle football, but it is not tackle football, and all of us, old guys, young guys that have had the uh, ability to go play football past high school play in college or even some at the pro level in this league. There are multiple people that have played uh, past high school football. We don't need to play tackle football anymore. That's why we play in this league. And that's what it's for. It's for everybody that wants to go play and not get all this contact, all these injuries. They don't, they don't need to deal with that anymore. People that have lives outside of this. And that's why we play in this flag football league. That we have played in for a long time now, and it's not you're not gonna you're not gonna tackle anybody. You're not gonna make people miss from tackling. You're not gonna block anybody. That's not what this is for. So, if this was tackle football, there I know there are people out there that are better than the people that say that. <laughs> well, um, that doesn't bother me personally, but. It bothers me on the level that I didn't start a tackle football league. I started a flag football league <laughs> because those are way different things. You know, I see the tackle football, the uh, the semi quote unquote semi pro tackle football stuff. To me, it uh, it looks kind of weird and messy because you got 170 pound um, offensive lineman protecting a 200 pound quarterback. <laughs> Everybody's exhausted by the second quarter, and then it just becomes a leaning fest. So, if you want to go play semi pro tackle football um, with your anorexic lineman, tubby quarterbacks, and referees who are panhandling a minute ago and selling used dentist chairs on Facebook for $30. <laughs> you have to buy your own pads and helmets and yeah. equipment. And... So you can go do that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and run the really nice flag football league where we play flag football because I'm an adult and I have a career. And everybody else, I would hope, most people that play out there are adults and have other stuff to do. And I don't have time for a broken leg. I don't have time to have snot bubbles coming out of my nose. Flag football and, fo and tackle football are similar, but they're not the same sport. It's like rugby and football aren't the same sport, and soccer and football aren't the same sport. Flag football is very different than tackle football. 
Um, that's why it's easy for a soccer player to come out there and play or a basketball player to come out there and play. But you may have gone to college, maybe even on a practice squad or an NFL team or, or otherwise, and um, you're just not the sort of athlete that can play flag football because you may have been a defensive end or a lineman or even a running back that never caught the ball. That's not going to do you much good out there. So that's how I feel about that whole thing. It's not tackle football. If you want to play tackle football, go find yourself a pack of douchebags and do it. <laughs> we have our pack of douchebags. We, we, we're full <laughs> And I'm fine with my pack of yeah. douchebags. So, you know, we're not that sort, though. Yeah. So it's kind of like you go into a basketball game and saying, well, if this was lacrosse, well, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, just, I, don't, I don't need to go – I've, I've, I don't need to go play any tackle football anymore. I've done my share of that. Now I'm playing a less uh, aggressive sport. And that's what this is for, is for people that don't, want it, don't need to take all the, the beating anymore of football. If you want to go play it, go play it. It's there for you. Yeah. You're going to pay a lot of money to go play it, though. Yeah, probably so. But whatever. Um, so that was just one thing that really got my uh, got your goat got my goat it got my goat rumbling got your goat rumbling huh mm-hmm. all right do you have anything else on any of that uh, no that was that was it that's that do you feel it. cathartic yes good all right well um guys I'll see y'all oh uh, hey you know what we're gonna have a guest next week we already from requesting guests in the last segment we already got a guest booked for next week look at that see people have already called in yeah we're gonna we're gonna have johnny acevedo on from uh the wolf pack he's gonna tell us how the cow eats the cabbage how the horse sniffs the dirt how the bird lays the egg and other stuff how the owl finds the field mice (laughs) well you know why the owl finds the field mice the field, mouse, the field mouse is fast, but the owl can see at night. <laughs> yes. All right. Exactly. We'll see you guys on Sunday. Have a wonderful week. Good luck. <laughs>